1971, Father Brennan visits a church that's still being built. He goes into a confessional booth and starts talking to Father Harris. Brennan shows Harris a photo of a baby and three people with the name Shiana on the back. The photo shocks Harris, but he answers Brennan's questions with hesitation. Harris admits that the church had once performed a dark ritual where a woman was blindfolded, tied to an altar, and forced to have sex with Satan. The baby in the photo is the result of that terrible act. Feeling overwhelmed with fear and guilt, Father Harris runs out of the confessional with Brennan chasing after him. They rush outside, a construction pole falls, shattering a stained glass window and hitting Harris on the head, killing him instantly. Meanwhile in Rome, Father Cardinal Lawrence warmly welcomes Margaret, a young American novice who has just arrived in Italy. Lawrence, who has mentored Margaret since she was a child, helping her through hallucinations and manic episodes, has invited her to Rome to complete her training and take her vows as a nun. As they drive through the city, they encounter a group of protesters. Lawrence explains that while some protests are about improving job conditions, many are led by young atheists who are unhappy with authority, including the church. He expresses his hope that devoted believers like Margaret can help inspire the younger generation to reconnect with the church. Lawrence takes Margaret to an abbey run by Sister Silva. Sister Silva explains that her abbey cares for orphans and supports unwed pregnant mothers in delivering their babies. At the abbey, Margaret meets a teenage girl named Carlita, who is often avoided because of her troublesome behavior. Trying to befriend Carlita, Margaret is taken aback when Carlita suddenly crawls toward her and licks her face. Sister Silva arrives quickly, scolding Carlita and urging her to behave properly. Despite this strange encounter, Margaret and Carlita start to bond as Margaret realizes that Carlita is dealing with struggles similar to those she faced in her own childhood. That night, as Margaret prays in her room, she hears voices outside talking about Carlita. At the same time, she is startled by the sudden appearance of an old nun who seems to materialize out of nowhere. Soon after, her roommate Luz arrives, dressed provocatively. Margaret is shocked to learn that Luz sneaks out at night to party at nightclubs. Luz explains that experiencing life outside the church is important to her, as it makes her vow to the church more meaningful if she has explored what the outside world has to offer. Later, Margaret is horrified to discover that Sister Silva locks Carlita in a stuffy room as punishment for misbehaving, a form of discipline Margaret herself endured as a child. Additionally, Margaret feels increasingly uneasy as she is taunted by a nun who persistently mocks her throughout the abbey. One night, Luz convinces Margaret to dress provocatively and join her at a nearby club. Having grown up sheltered by the church, Margaret is both excited and nervous about this new experience. At the club, a man named Paolo buys her several drinks. As Margaret becomes more intoxicated, she starts to relax and ends up dancing with Paolo. The night ends with them making out before Margaret blacks out. The next morning, Margaret wakes up with a pounding hangover and no memory of the previous night. She stumbles into the living room, where Luz explains that she stopped Margaret from doing anything too reckless and brought her home to help her recover from her hangover. As Margaret is trying to recover from the previous night, Father Brennan approaches her urgently. He shows her a photo and asks for her help in finding Siana, who is living in the abbey and is in serious danger from the church. Brennan explains that he is barred from the abbey and believes Margaret can help because she is new and might be able to locate Siana, a key witness to grave misfortune. Margaret hesitates, but Brennan gives her his address in case she decides to help later. Later that day at the abbey, Margaret witnesses a woman in labor. To her horror, she sees a demonic hand emerging from the woman's privates. The terrifying sight overwhelms Margaret, causing her to faint and collapse on the floor. The next day, Margaret sees the creepy nun showing a picture of a pregnant woman to Carlita. Feeling this is inappropriate, Margaret intervenes and demands that the nun leave Carlita alone. In a fit of rage, the nun kisses Margaret on the lips before running away. Later, the nun reappears on an upper floor balcony, drenched in gasoline and wearing a noose around her neck. She declares, it's all for you, before setting herself on fire and jumping from the balcony, hanging herself. Convinced by Brennan's warnings and suspecting that Carlita might be Sienna, Margaret decides to visit him. Brennan explains that within the church, there are two factions, one genuinely seeks to follow God's path, while the other is focused only on preserving the church's power. As more people have turned away from the church, the latter group has resorted to extreme measures to regain control. Brennan, who opposes this corrupt faction, has been excommunicated as a result. Brennan then describes the ritual that Father Harris had previously confided in him. He explains that the church performed this ritual to produce a child sired by Satan. The photo of Sienna, Brennan reveals, is actually of this child of Satan. They both agree that Carlita could very well be Sienna. 
Brennan reveals that the church plans to perform a ritual to impregnate a woman with the Antichrist, who must be a boy. They believe that the birth of the Antichrist will trigger the apocalypse, forcing people to return to the church and restore its historical power. He asks Margaret to search for files hidden in the abbey related to Carlita's birth. If Carlita was born on the sixth day of the sixth month at 6 a.m., a number associated with the devil, it would confirm that she is the child of Satan and needs to be rescued. Brennan also mentions that if Carlita is indeed the spawn of Satan, she will have a birthmark shaped like 666 somewhere on her body. Margaret is deeply shaken by this revelation, but remains hesitant to fully accept Brennan's claims and swiftly runs away from his apartment, thinking he might be delusional. The next day, on the bus, Margaret first approaches a priest named Gabriel and asks for help in locating Carlita's records. Gabriel refuses to assist her. Margaret then turns to Carlita and inquires about her troubling behavior. Carlita reveals that she hears voices and sees horrifying visions. Margaret dismisses these claims, sharing that she also had similar visions as a child but later realized they were just hallucinations. Carlita questions how Margaret can be so certain that her own experiences were merely hallucinations. At that moment, a nearby protest escalates into a riot. As students and nuns flee in panic, Margaret experiences a severe hallucination, where she is attacked by a demonic figure visible only to her. She screams and writhes in terror while Sister Silva watches with a disapproving expression. Later, Sister Silva and the other nuns confront Margaret, accusing her of deteriorating mental health and claiming that her paranoia is worsening Carlita's situation. Although Sister Silva is responsible for Carlita's instability, they place the blame on Margaret, the only one who genuinely cares for Carlita. They forbid Margaret from interacting with Carlita any further and declare her unfit to take her vows. Overwhelmed by the injustice and feeling betrayed, Margaret leaves the church in anger. As Margaret drives home, she spots Paolo walking on the sidewalk and pulls over to speak with him. Paolo looks horrified to see her and quickly apologizes, saying, I didn't know. Confused and desperate, Margaret begs him to explain his fear. Paolo begins to say, check for a birthmark, but before he can finish, a runaway car strikes him, pinning him against a wall. Margaret tries to help, but Paolo's torso is severed from his lower half, and he dies instantly. Overwhelmed by the brutal scene, Margaret screams and cries in horror. The next day, as Luz prepares to take her vows, everyone at the abbey is busy with the ceremony. Seizing the opportunity, Margaret sneaks into Sister Silva's office and discovers a hidden passage. The passage leads to a room with a filing cabinet. Margaret finds several files labeled Sayana, and upon examining them, she discovers disturbing pictures of deformed and deceased children, each marked with a birthmark shaped like 666. Realizing the gravity of the situation, Margaret takes all the files and begins searching for Carlita so they can escape together. As Margaret and Carlita attempt to escape, they are spotted by some nuns, forcing them to hide quickly. Margaret hides the files under the bedsheets just before the nuns break into the room. In the struggle, one of the nuns grabs Margaret, and Carlita tries to help her. During the chaos, Margaret notices a triple six birthmark on Carlita's mouth as the girl screams in pain. They successfully capture Margaret and lock her in a small room, where she is tormented by horrifying visions of the nun who set herself on fire. That night, Father Gabriel rescues Margaret. He has discovered the files she hid and has been secretly collaborating with Father Brennan. Gabriel and Margaret sneak out to meet Brennan. As they review the files, they learn that Siana refers to the church's project to conceive a child with Jackal, a.k.a. Satan. The files detail various attempts by the church to produce such a child, with most attempts failing and the offspring dying shortly after birth. One file, however, is missing a photo, the very photo that Brennan possesses. Upon examining the photo, they notice a 666 birthmark on the baby's scalp. Margaret realizes that the baby in the picture cannot be Carlita, as Carlita's birthmark is on the upper part of her mouth. They then find a second file with information about Carlita, confirming that there are indeed two living children of Satan. Margaret suddenly recalls Paolo's last words, urging her to check for birthmarks. Her memory of that night at the club floods back, she had passed out from alcohol, and Paolo had brought her to the abbey out of guilt. At the abbey, Margaret remembers being taken to a secret chamber, tied to an altar and offered to the devil. There she was raped by the jackal while Sister Silva and other clergy watched with approval. Stunned by the horrifying memory, Margaret screams in agony. Brennan and Gabriel rush to her side trying to calm her down. Desperate to understand the truth, they carefully examine her scalp and discover a triple six birthmark, confirming that Margaret is the baby in the photo Brennan had been searching for. Realizing she is pregnant with the Antichrist, Brennan and Gabriel help Margaret into a car, 
heading toward an abortion clinic. Before they can reach their destination, their vehicle is T-boned by church assailants. Gabriel is killed in the crash, and Brennan is knocked unconscious. Margaret tries to escape, but begins to exhibit bizarre behavior, acting like a dog due to her hybrid nature, half-human, half-jackal. The influence of the Antichrist accelerates her pregnancy, and her water breaks. As she loses consciousness, church members capture her. Margaret awakens strapped to a bed, with Cardinal Lawrence standing beside her. Lawrence reveals that he was part of the scheme to birth the Antichrist. He tells Margaret she should be proud, as the birth of the Antichrist will restore the church's power and save millions of souls. As nuns and other clergy look on, a doctor performs a C-section and removes a sac from Margaret's uterus. When the sac is opened, it reveals twins, one boy and one girl. The clergy ignore the girl and acclaim the boy as the Antichrist. The doctor then sews Margaret back up. Margaret calls out, asking to hold her child. Believing she has accepted her role, Cardinal Lawrence hands her the baby boy. However, it's a trap. Margaret has secretly taken a scalpel and uses it to stab Lawrence in the throat. She then grabs the baby boy and threatens to kill him. Sister Silva tackles Margaret and they engage in a fierce struggle. Margaret cries out in pain and looks up to see her former friend Luz, who has just stabbed her. Luz reveals that she has been working with Silva and Lawrence all along. As Margaret collapses to the floor, the clergy retrieve the baby boy. As they prepare to leave, Sister Silva orders an underling to set the place on fire. The underling ignites the room and then departs. Margaret, left alone with her abandoned baby girl, braces herself to die in the flames. To her surprise, Carlita appears and helps Margaret and the baby girl escape the blaze. As they flee they hear a demonic scream. Looking back they see a jackal-shaped beast, Satan, who impregnated Margaret, howling in agony as the flames consume it. Meanwhile, church members kill the baby from the Thorne family and replace him with Margaret's baby boy, setting the stage for the events of the original film from 2006. For more details on that movie, be sure to subscribe to the next video. Five years later, Margaret, Carlita and Margaret's daughter are living in a secluded cabin. Father Brennan arrives and Margaret threatens him with a gun. Brennan reassures her that he means them no harm, he is there to warn them that the church has discovered they are still alive and is plotting to eliminate all three. As Brennan leaves, he informs Margaret that her Antichrist son, now named Damien, is alive and rising to power, and the story ends.